Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In today's video, we're going to airbrush some real fire and we're going to do it really easily. So we're going to show you how that's done right now. For the purpose of this step-by-step, -step, I'm using a canvas. So this is 250 by 250 mil or 25 by 25 centimeters. And I'm basing the canvas in black Trident water-based paint and I've mixed my paint at about a one-to-one -one ratio, so equal parts of paint and reducer. Here are some of the colors that we're going to be using. Trident Peach Flesh, Createx Illustration Colors. We're using white, orange, and yellow, as well as Trident Red. And then we've also got a mixed-up Trident White with the yellow to make this opaque yellow that we're going to use for our layering process. So we're not using any candies to create this real fire, all water-based paints, really simple to do, and you don't need to worry about adding the sealer coat in between your candies to stop bleeding because we're not using candies. So um, it looks just as effective using water-based paints. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our red straight out of the bottle, and we're gonna do some freehand airbrushing combined with using the freehand template that you see there. Now I've just picked some um, different ones out of the uh, True Fire series by Art Tool. You can uh, get sort of similar templates for other, from other brands as well. I like using the Michael Valley True Fire Art Tool ones. They just seem to have the correct shapes for me um, when I'm doing fire. I will link up to some of these templates as well as some of the paint um, below in the description below so I'll just pop some affiliate links in there for you so you can easily find what I'm using and if you like it you can buy it and that'll also help to support our channel. To all of our regular viewers, thanks for tuning in yet again, and we do appreciate that you are a subscriber. For anyone that's new to this channel, we hope you're enjoying this so far. Uh, feel free to hit subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this and all sorts of other formats. We try and do weekly videos, and we would love to have you as part of our community. So feel free to hit subscribe, Remember to tap on that bell icon so that you get notified every time we put out new content. So now I'm switching to my Peach Flesh by Trident. I thought I'd just use this straight out of the bottle. You can also mix up what's called a Molly Orange, which is um, pretty much what used to be spoken about for your layer tone um, with fire. Now that's just made up of white with uh, orange. The reason I'm using the Peach Flesh is because I just thought it's a perfect and very close to the Molly Orange color and it's, I can just use it straight out of the bottle. Now with the Trident paints, I'll link up to those as well in the description. Um, they will link back to our uh, online store, so that'll service Australia only. Unfortunately, we don't ship overseas. However, if you do want Trident paints overseas, I think they have a $19 or $20 flat rate, like $20 US flat rate to, um, to for overseas shipping. So check it out. I'll, I'll put their, um, their link as well directly to their website in the description. So you'll notice with this layer, I'm not exactly following what I've done previously. The idea is that the red is your first layer in the background um, and you sort of, you can work kind of loose to tight as well. So if it's a little bit blurry or in the background, um, that's fine. You can also adjust it as you see fit. There is no real sure way of doing fire it's totally up to you how you do it put your own spin to it um, this is just the way that works for me and i've done it for so many years 
uh, especially with the water-based paints. So, I mean, it's a similar procedure, it's just I swap out the candies for the water base. I am also aware that uh, a few companies do have water-based candies. Well, they're not true water-based, but they're, um, you know, they're still classified as water-based. But um, yeah, you, so you can use those as well um, and just swap out the colours for your candy colours. So as you can see, I'm again sketching with my template. It's a mix of freehand as well as using that template. You don't want to overdo it with the template and you don't want to do too much freehand. It's kind of getting that balance and that flow, which is the hardest thing to do when you're doing um, real fire. It's just practice, practice, practice. Now that we've completed that layer, I'm going to switch to my orange, the Createx Illustration Color Orange. And all I'm going to do is, from a distance, I'm just going to spray over that previous layer that we've just completed. Now I'm applying a fairly decent uh, coat. I'm sort of building it up as well, so gradually going heavier, but because this is completely transparent, it, it kind of acts like a candy already. You could also add transparent base to your colours if they're not as transparent as you like, or you don't want them as strong. Um, it's just going to mean that you need to coat it a bit more. But um, yeah, by all means, you can use that technique as well if the particular brand of paint that you're using isn't as transparent as the Createx is. You can see that's making a, a huge difference and starting to really give us that fiery effect with those layers starting to appear which is what we want. We are now switching to our white mixed with yellow, so that our opaque yellowy colour. And we're going to continue to do another layer on top of our flames. This time we are going to start to follow a little bit more of what we've done previously, but we don't want to just go straight over the top of it. So always keep that in mind, you don't want to completely cover each layer. The idea of fire is that you can look through the layers and you get that, obviously, that real fire, that realistic fire effect. Now I'm aware that when I say realistic fire, this is still, in my eyes, a stylized fire. I'm not trying to achieve a photorealistic look, so if you want that, then this might not be the video for you. Um, we just want a cool looking, realistic-y sort of fire that you can use on all sorts of applications and it always looks great on like Harley tanks, you know, cars, any sort of automotive application looks fantastic on. You can also um, incorporate it with other artworks, you know, if you're painting a dragon or if you're skulls, you know, skulls and flames, skulls and fire, it all, yeah, it all works. So it's one of the most used techniques for us especially. Constantly get requested to do fire and incorporate it with other things. So 
I highly recommend that you, if you want to be an airbrush artist and you want to do this as a living, or even if you, you know, doing it on the side, um, just to earn a bit more cash, then I'd recommend learning this tip. This is definitely one that you need to know and that you want to be able to do some amazing stuff with. So we just forgot to do a couple of those dot highlights on our embers there. So make sure you check over everything that you've completed the layer in its entirety. So now we're switching to our Createx illustration color yellow. And we're going to do the same sort of thing as what we did with our orange earlier. We're going to start spraying over the top of this particular layer. So for anyone that's interested, the airbrush that I'm using currently is the Iwata CMC Plus Micron. So it has that MAC valve on the front so you can drop the air pressure if need be. Uh, for this particular project you don't really need that feature but it is handy to have. Um, I also use the HPCS Eclipse by Iwata at the start of the video to complete the black. Um, this one that I'm using now runs a 0.23 mm needle and the Eclipse runs a 0.35 so it's a bit thicker and um, yeah it was just more suited to completing the base coat but you can also do fine detail with it so great all-round brush and obviously Iwata are a great brand so um, I will also put some links in the description so you can check those out So we're going to switch back to our white yellow mix and create another layer. So with this layer now we are really trying to get our real hot spots, so the white parts and the hot, hottest part of the flame. 
So we're, we're sort of focusing on our highlights predominantly now. We're still using what we've created previously. Again, we're not going right over the top, um, but we are starting to now follow um, a bit more closely what we've created in the earlier layers and we're kind of just bringing certain areas into the foreground by creating these highlights and these hot spotted areas. So again, you know, use the edges of your template. Keep the flow consistent. Usually with the fire you have that bulkier section um, down towards the, the lower end and the mass of the fire and then we flick up from there. So if you're doing this on um, a curved surface, let's say a Harley tank or something like that, uh, then you know you would get that you'd sort of work with the shape of the tank and really follow the flow so hard to explain from a flat surface like this but um, yeah keep that in mind you just sort of got to visualize how that fire would flick over the surface or flutter up the surface as I'm showing you with this canvas Now switching back to our yellow, what we're going to do now is we're just going to sort of blend in some of these areas. So we're not, you can notice, I'm not going straight over the top as we were with our previous layers uh, when we did the yellow or the orange. This time I'm really just hitting the edges, so where that, that sort of white yellow um, overspray is traveling back into my fire I'm sort of knocking that harsh edge off there just to make it look like it's all one it's all merged into a layer it's not just sitting on top and just real stark okay so that's what this is all about just softly uh, knocking out some of those real bright sections Okay, so now we're switching to Trident Red and similar sort of thing, except this time we're going to kind of give a bit more depth again. So you can see there I've just done a bit of that red off that edge there on either side of the fire and that's popped that lick to the front and knocked those other areas back. So if you think about the red as a, it's sort of like a push tool, you can push things into the background therefore making them more subtle under those layers. Okay, so switching back to our yellow and white mix, we're just going to do some final highlights. So predominantly the embers, those dot white highlights on there, we want to really brighten those up. And just in certain spots, we don't go overboard with this uh, step, we're just going to really follow what we've already got. We don't want to create another separate layer, we just want to brighten up some of those areas. You can see there on that, that one there, that ember, and I'm just blending that out with a little bit of freehand but kind of colouring it back in because obviously we, we want to be careful not to eliminate everything that we've just done you can see how even that little bit of white makes all the difference
Okay, so now we're going to seal in our artwork using our crystal coat fixative. This is a matte finish. We use this for a lot of our canvases and it just protects the artwork. So we're just going to do a couple of nice and heavy coats to seal that in. And that'll also even out all of our airbrushing, make everything look a bit more uniformed. So here we have our completed artwork. You can really notice how that spray, that sealer has flattened out all of our tones and just giving you a up close detailed look. Obviously if you're doing this on a, a hard panel like an aluminium composite panel or something like that, um, you're going to get a different appearance but I don't mind a bit of the texture in the canvas. So I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I hope that you found this very, very helpful and I'm sure you're going to have fun incorporating this fire effect into your own artworks. So I hope you enjoyed that video and you found it helpful. If you like our content, feel free to be part of our community. Hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon and that will notify you every time we put out new content. Until next time, go grab that airbrush and do some amazing artwork and we will see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.